So I have been selling my first scarf. It's for a friend of mine though. I'm making her husband a tea tunic in pants and her a uh, underdress and a dry rock. And I've been selling since 2006. So I was like trying to remember how to do everything. And I messed up a couple times and everything's not perfect, but I'm going to get used to it. Uh, the pants were really hard to make. <laughs> the pattern's like super easy. And I was like, that's because you leave out like 50 steps. And, uh, I have one part I have to part one part I have to finish with them and then make the little um drawstrings. So I left that because I needed more measurements and also I was just gonna well originally I'd asked for more measurements, but I think I'm just gonna use my stepdad's pants and base the pants off of that because men always wear their pants differently, so it's like I'm a woman and I'm shaped different from this guy, so I'm kinda like I can't really hold them up to myself. Uh the top measurements for us are pretty much the same, which is sad and awesome at the same time, Zach. So I was like, oh, same as a guy, <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, yes, use my own garb. And so I put my own garb down to make the tea tunic, which has been really easy thus far. I'm making it out of old sheets. I'm pretty sure if I try to do it after something else, it might be a little bit more difficult. The sheets are like nice and wide and all that. Um, but uh, the only thing is I can't make a fancy neck on them. I just have to make the circular neckline like this. Maybe do like a little dash down here, but that's pretty much all I can do. And... Um, I kept forgetting, I kept adding extra inches, so I was like, okay, I'm going to fold these in and sew them to finish off edges, and then I would just sew it, and I was like, oh crap, I didn't finish it, so now this thing's like four extra inches long, or wide, or this, or whatever, and I was like, why did you put so many extra inches, and I put them there because I'm afraid of my sewing abilities that many inches, because usually they say like, use like an inch and a half or something. I put so many inches in because I'm afraid of my sewing abilities if I mess up that I'm going to be screwed. So I wanted to put extra material in there that I can just use a sim ripper and make it bigger or smaller and leave stuff in there, especially if this person, I don't know if they fluctuate weight or not. So I'm almost done with my second, my first tea tunic, then I can start with the second one. It's been nice with this one because it has a plaid pattern and I cut it to the point and it's able, I'm able to fold it in pieces and like put it against the line so it's easier so without having to sit there with a the ruler and make sure I'm measuring them the same width across. Um, getting back in the groove of sewing though is a little difficult and without help. <laughs> I've done it all by myself thus far. Um, I might ask for help with the pants and I'm worried about the track rock, but I'll figure it out. So um, I'm not doing any trim or anything like extra spectacular or perfect on them. So uh, they're just me plain, but there's something cool. She, ha she has like a heavy linen, um, like a cream color pants for the guy and a plaid top. I'm looking at the colors. Uh, which is dark blue and then the lines are green and cream colored to match the pants. Her underdress is linen, or I think it looks like linen. Might be cotton, I gotta check. Um, which is the same color as his pants, but hers are made from a sheet. We bought the material, or she bought the material for his pants. And then like a really, really pretty burgundy almost color red for her trag rocks. So um, I thought the underdress being a linen or the cream color would be better so she can mix and match trag rocks if she got them. That's what I like with my my favorite trag or my favorite underdress is black so I can mix and match the trag rocks over them. But I need to make, if I get this down, I'm going to be making some more costumes, probably some men's outfits as well, because sometimes when you're camping with the SCA, it sucks to wear a dress. <laughs> I'm like, some events are so freaking hot that I'm like pulling my dress up to like my hips almost. And I was like, I'm just going to wear bike shorts underneath or something. And uh, other times you're like, I'm freezing. I have like four dresses layered over each other and I'm still cold. So I usually just wear sweatpants or something because people can't really tell. And usually when it's that cold, um, it's at nighttime. So, um, all these events I'm going to are in uh, California. So the areas that they chose for them are not really all that cold usually, from what I hear. I've only been to one war in each, three wars in different areas. I mean, I've been to Highland War, hot as hell. <laughs> and it was actually cool for the year we went. Uh, May War, which is in Petrero, which is like by San Diego, where I live. It's like, I think it's very close. I forgot how long it took to drive there. I think it was like less than an hour. And then um, Great Western War, which is in Taft. And Highland War was in Victorville, I believe. So you get an idea, if you know California, of how hot the areas are certain years. Certain times of the year. May War, May is in May. Highland War is usually at the end of August, early September. So it's still hot in California in most places, and then Great Western War is the first week of October. So it really depends if we're having an Indian summer, which happens every single year, it feels like. Um, but yeah, so I have some old sheets. So once I get these done, I'm going to see if I can get anything made by Great Western War because I don't want to freeze my ass off at night or freeze my buttocks off at night. So I want to make a couple of extra underdresses or perhaps some pants or something to wear.
Um, it would also be nice to have some more garb. My garb that I have now is like perfect. Um, I've talked about it before in my videos. It's like fantastic garb. <laughs> and I don't think my sewing can compare to that, but hopefully eventually it will. So anyway, thank you for watching. And I will try and remember after the first fitting, or perhaps um, if they're wearing it at an event that I have a video camera at, to capture what the outfits look like. If I can share it on here, my wall is like right behind me, so it's kind of hard unless I pull my camera back somewhere else to take a video of it. But I will try to do so. Maybe I'll take off my iPod, but those always turn out crappy. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, I can't wait to show off my <laughs> first attempts at making Norse garb eventually when it's finished. I should have started a long time ago. It's already August 15th. 17, 16th, and it needs to be done probably by the before st September starts, so we can do a fitting and then have it done for Pagan Pride Day, and then they have a Viking Fest and everything at the end of September. But anyway, ramble, ramble, ramble. I keep saying that's the end of my video, and then I keep rambling some more. So that's it. Have a good day, night, wherever it is where you're at.